Today, I'm going to show you five free ways to rank higher and get more leads, traffic, and sales using ChatGPT 3.5 for SEO because who doesn't like free automation workflows for ranking content? But if you don't want to buy expensive tools and you just want an easy way to automate your SEO strategy, make sure you keep watching and we're going to get straight into it. So step number one is using ChatGPT 3.5 for structured schema data for FAQs. Now you might be wondering, what on earth is that? Well, if we look at one of my websites, right? And you look at this article ranking number one on Google, why do birds wiggle? Because we all wanna know that, right? We've all been wondering that for years. Well, if you look, it links directly to the frequently asked questions on this page. And this is actually using FAQ schema. So this is a way of formatting the HTML on your page so that Google crawls it and it can see exactly which part of your page answers the question. Um, this gives you a higher chance of getting featured on rich snippets. Now this is very different to just creating H3 or H2 tags with your frequently asked questions because if we check the HTML over here and I know this looks complicated, but it's not. So we have the code here in the HTML that marks the question and the code here that marks the answer. And the good thing is ChatGPT can give you this HTML code for free you don't need to code it at all, which is awesome. So how do you do it? So to generate the schema yourself, all you need to do is you use a prompt like this and we'll paste it in there. And we say, create the FAQ schema HTML markup for my FAQ below so that I can base it straight into Gutenberg, AKA WordPress without any plugins, right? And that's going to generate the content for you automatically once you've added your FAQs. So you're going to put the question answer like this. We'll hit enter like this. And that will generate the HTML code that we can paste straight into our article that generates the FAQ schema. And I'll give you an example. So if we go to a new WordPress post like this, obviously normally you would add it just straight to the end of your article, but there you go. You've got the FAQ markup schema like this. It's formatted it. We'll hit save draft like that. We can even test if it works. So we can paste our HTML here, click run test like this. And there you can see that ChatGPT 3.5 has given us the FAQ markup schema for free. If you want an even quicker way to do this, you can actually use Rank Math. It's a free plugin and it does the FAQs for you. So it gives you the FAQ schema block right there. It's totally free as well. Either way, whether you use ChatGPT, whether you use Rank Math, it's really worth doing to improve your rankings. As you've seen, it helped me rank number one for that article. And you might be wondering like me, is it worth going to all that trouble to create schema? Well, actually I've seen some case studies like this, for example, that prove that after four weeks of doing this, Adding schema to your website can improve. There's many different types of schema, but we're just covering the FAQ one today. And it can make a big difference to your rankings and help you get those rich snippets that leads to more traffic. Next up, what you can actually do is re-optimize your old content using 3.5. So if you've got Google Search Console like this, totally free tool, then all you need to do is you go to performance, search results. You look at the last three months and you organize by the pages that are not getting any clicks, right? Because these are the pages that aren't getting any traction with Google, they're not ranking. And after three months of being indexed, you can see that this page is just not getting any clicks at all. So what you can do is if you go from queries to pages like this, you're gonna open up the page that's actually ranking and is getting all the impressions. So you can see this is the page that's ranking, this is the page that's getting impressions, and this is the one that needs to be re-optimized to make sure it ranks. And then you can look at this page and look at ways to improve its rankings to make sure that it ranks higher. Now, basically it's probably a case of just making our content more comprehensive, more interesting, more detailed. So what you can do is if you paste that into Google, you're just gonna go into your top competitors, look at which headings they've included that you've not. So you basically reverse engineer what's already ranking on the top page of Google and then figure out, okay, what's missing in my article that I can add with ChatGPT based on my competitors. So if we pull up one of our competitors like this, this article is preferred by Google and we can just pull up the headings. You can see here, this is a really amazing Chrome extension called Headings Map. You can get it for free on Chrome and you'll see all the headings here. And probably some of these I've not included in my article, shockingly. If we take this heading, for example, why are birds warm blooded? And we check my article to see whether I've included it. Well, I've not included it. So I know if I get ChatGPT to create some content around why are birds warm blooded and I insert that into my article and any other headings I've missed along with the content underneath it, then I have a much higher chance of ranking on Google. I just get it re-indexed on Google Search Console and all of a sudden all the pages, and there's a lot of them that are not getting traffic, I can easily just re-optimize 
to make sure the rankings improve. And then you would just go through the rest of your content, keep improving it, keep looking at other competitors that are outranking you. And with 3.5, you can so easily generate the content that's missing between you and your competitors, bridge a gap, and that gives you a higher chance of ranking. Obviously, if you really want to do this properly, you would manually edit the content, quality check it, fact check it before you paste it into your article. But this just gives you such an easy way to narrow that gap between where your competitors are and where you are. Next up, you can use ChatGPT to insert the internal links for your website manually. So if we take this article, for example, and you can only really do it with maximum about 1,000, 2,000 words, how would you generate the text with the internal links inside it? Well, we're going to use this prompt and I'll include it in my free course, but you can take a quick screenshot if you want to use it now. And basically you're going to rewrite the content, making it formatted nicely, include a list of relevant internal links and make sure it uses markup, not HTML. So we can have a look and quickly scan through it. You include any list of internal links that you want to use. For example, we've used the ones from our Google search console and then you paste in the content you want to rewrite. So for example, like this article, we'll paste it in down here. And hopefully, it doesn't always work, but hopefully it's starting to rewrite the content using internal links. Now, this does not always work. Quick disclaimer. For example, like when I pasted in the prompt the first time round, it didn't work. I just want to show you behind the scenes. So I had to ask it, where's the internal links? And then it listened to me. It's a little bit deviant and it's got a mind of its own somehow. But there you can see it's added in the internal links like this. So it included... And it's added some internal links here as well. So we scroll down. So that is a quick way to add your internal links to your website. If it doesn't work, just ask it to add them in like this. Additionally, we can get ChatGPT to format our content nicer with H2s and H3s and that sort of thing. And this basically makes your content more readable as we scan down the page. So you can see, for example, this article has some nice headings. The text is broken up. And you can ask ChatGPT to do that. So for example, normally if you ask ChatGPT just to write a blog, it's going to pump out a bunch of text like this, but it's not nicely formatted. And when you paste it into WordPress, it's not going to look like this. It won't be as readable. So when people land on the page, they're going to bounce straight off because your content is not very engaging in the way it's been formatted. So we can make our content a lot better. So for example, if you say to ChatGPT, create a blog about what do birds eat, right? And as you look at the content, it's going to generate the content. It's going to answer the question, but it doesn't look very nicely formatted in the way that the text is created. It's not very interesting. And if you saw that pasted on a blog where it's just like one big wall of text, it's not very interesting to read. It's not nicely formatted. It definitely doesn't look like this. And so how can you improve that? Well, after you've generated the blog content, if you use this prompt, rewrite this article as markup with H2s, H3s, bold and italic, the key phrases, and most important parts, bullet points and tables, that's going to come back to you with a much better designed article, as you can see. And the most important parts of the article, for example, the keyword here are in italics. You can see that it's added some H2s throughout the content. We've also got some bullet points. The text is split up. It's much nicer to read. And therefore, the readability is going to be better. The content is going to look better. The on-page metrics are going to be better for the content. And this is way better than the first version that you generated originally. If you want this prompt to copy and paste, I'll include it in my free course. You can check that out later after this video. Link is in the comments. And our final way to use ChatGPT 3.5 is to reverse engineer our competitors so that we can create content outlines that are really detailed and that you can actually outsource to other writers. So let's say, for example, you're going to create a blog on this particular keyword. So what you're going to be using for this particular section is Harper AI. Now this actually uses 3.5 as part of its algorithm. It's totally free. You can add it to your Chrome like this, totally free Chrome extension. And once that's installed, it's going to be in your browser like this, as you can see. And then you can just easily scrape and create content outlines based on your top ranking competitor. So how would you do that? Well, you'd go onto your competitor's page like this. So you want to generate the outline for open up Harper. And we can use a prompt that says, based on page text, create a blog outline, LSI keywords, headings, search intent, word count, and writer instructions. And that's going to create a really nice content outline based on the article here, based on what's already ranking. You can see it's included some writer instructions. It's got the word count recommended there. This is basically reverse engineering your competitor's content and then telling you how to write a similar or even better article. You can see that it's actually given us the search intent for this article. So if you're giving it to a writer, they instantly know 
how to write the article, who they're writing for, the target market, and the problem that needs to be solved. On top of that, we've got the LSI keywords. And these are the keywords to include inside your content that signal to Google's crawler that your content is extremely relevant and on point. Then we've got a list of a very detailed content outline, as well as an introduction, a recommended title. So it is a really powerful way to create content outlines on steroids, basically. And that means you don't need to pay for expensive tools like Phrase, plus you reverse engineer on what's working for your competitors. So it's based on data. And let's be honest, ranking on Google is just maths. So if you grab the data from your competitors, you use AI to, to analyze that data, and then you create the content outline, you're absolutely winning. So thanks so much for watching. If you want all of these prompts that I've talked about today, I'll add them as a new section in my course and you can get them for free. I'll leave a link in the description to this free course. You can get it here. Thanks for watching and hope this video helped you.